that it was within God's purposes that the Jewish people should have a home in the backyard. There are some, of course, who will say that God has finished with Israel. Wars and rumors of wars. These are the birth pains of global change. In doing so, they opened the way for the restoration of the Jewish people to their ancient homeland. Did God reject his people? By no means. Romans 11, verse 1. That the destiny of Britain was actually to be the restorer of Israel, the Cyrus nation and the sovereign purposes of God. Prepare your hearts to receive the blessing of the Cyrus call. Shalom once again. I'm Randy Weiss, a Jewish believer in a Jewish Messiah. We're in a special series of Crosstalk International programs produced in partnership with the Hatikva Film Trust. We're here to declare that God is not done with Israel, and that is why we hope everyone will listen for the Cyrus call. In our previous episode, we touched on a story from the mid-1800s. Protestant believers took steps of faith to help the Jewish people be restored in the land of Israel. Missionary groups like the Church's Ministry Among the Jews, known as the CMJ, heard the Cyrus call. They built the historic Christ Church in Jerusalem. In case you've never visited Israel, I'm pleased to be able to take you there for a segment of our special televised ministry concert that I did at Christ Church some years ago. And later, we will learn how early Christian missionary efforts in Jerusalem accelerated the development of modern Israel through the Cyrus Call. I want to welcome you here to Christ Church in Jerusalem at the Jaffa Gate. What a, a beautiful a beautiful church, a beautiful place to be. It's very exciting. My name is Dr. Randy Weiss, and I host a television program in the United States. It's called Crosstalk. And I'm a Jewish believer in, in Jesus, in Yeshua HaMashiach. And I teach about the Jewish origins of the church in our program. I inform the American Christian population about anti-Semitism and the history of Christian anti-Semitism. I try and deal with issues of orthodoxy versus heresy. And above all, I try to bring praise to our King. And I enjoy singing to my Lord. The first 20 years of our ministry was primarily a music ministry. And in the last seven years, we've uh, expanded into Christian television. Now, I know that being here in Israel, some of you may not be terribly familiar with American Christian television. Uh, it's a strange enterprise. There are kind of some odd things that are sometimes presented in uh, some Christian programming, and um, the, American, the American viewing audience sometimes wants to hear things that will make them feel good and convince them that everything's going to be wonderful and if you say the right prayer and have enough faith that everything will just be perfect and there will be no dark days. But uh, somehow, as Christians, we have no darkness, but there are dark days. There are experiences that uh, can be a little awkward, but we have hope in Christ. And that is something that no one can take from us regardless of whether it's a good day or a bad day. Now, I want to preface this concert by saying that we're videotaping this for the American Christian audience. And I realize that there are some Jewish believers that uh, have joined us here for the concert. I want you to understand that uh, I do realize some of the problems you face, some of the rejection that you, you face. I too have faced rejection. I too have been shunned by people very near and dear to me. And when you suffer for the cause of Christ, 
it's, uh, it's a blessing, and we can count it all joy. If there are any of you here who are worried about reprisals or concerns, um, if you let us know, we'll be sure and modify the video so that your faces will not be identified. Uh, but whatever you experience in life, I want to tell you what the Bible says. It says, count it all joy. Uh, we're to rejoice even in tribulation. Now, at the same time, uh, I want to tell you that I'm, I'm so excited to be here in Eretz Yisrael. It's such a privilege to be in the land of Israel. Um, I wish that my father could have heard that the government of Israel invited me to come to do a work for Christian television representing Israel. Uh, I'm so thankful because having experienced rejection, having experienced some of the things that many of you have, I'm a blessed man to know that the land of Israel has welcomed me to come and bring a good word back to the United States about your wonderful country, the land of my people. Now, I got to tell you, uh, this trip has been very interesting. First off, your cab drivers. Oh, they're Meshuggah. Uh, I think your, your cab drivers are on suicide missions, and they weren't trained in Lebanon or, you know, Hezbollah. I mean, I think they were trained in New York City, and then they did their, their apprenticeship driving in Rome, and then they come to Jerusalem to do their journeyman driving because they're driving in places that cars shouldn't go. <laughs> and I'll tell you, my son Joshua, they're all talking about Joshua. The cab drivers have Joshua on, on their mind. I, we're walking down the street and they're yelling, Joshua, Joshua, because we needed to take a cab back to the hotel, and Joshua was bargaining. He's negotiating with the drivers. And uh, no, no, that's too many shekels. No, no, 20 shekels, 20 shekels. And they're saying, no, 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 no. They, they want 25, 30 shekels. And, and Josh is arguing with them, and I'm embarrassed. And finally, one of the drivers says, how much do you want to pay, Joshua? And Joshua says, 20 shekels. And the driver says, okay. And he put his arm around him. He says, 20 shekels. Call the camels. Call the donkeys. 20 shekels. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. And so then they came over to me and they said, you're a nice gentleman. We'll take you. We'll even let Joshua go. You pay us whatever you want. <laughs> so they were very kind. <laughs> now, your country has so much to offer. And I think every American Christian should come to the land of Israel. Every believer should come to experience what what you can here and what we can as we tour this lovely country. I was at the, uh, the Church of the Holy Sepulchre yesterday. It was a tremendous place. As we went in, somebody offered 50 camels for my wife. I'm not making it up. 50 camels. And when we left, he tried again and he went up to 100 camels. It's the truth. It's the truth. And she would have been a bargain at 250, I want you to know. <laughs> but I didn't come here to talk about cab drivers or camels. I, I came here to sing about my king. In just a moment, please allow me to present a unique song recorded at the first Protestant church built in Israel. Stay tuned. The Cyrus Call may be your challenge to pray for the Jewish people and to find God's heart for the land of Israel. Southwestern Assemblies of God University School of Business has a vision to make an impact in the lives of students and the world. To be uncommon, you have to look outside the walls of traditional thinking. That is why they reached out to Crosstalk International to work together to develop a plan that teaches students to change the world by actually doing it. Dr. LaShonda Beckwith of SAGU and SAGU alumni Joshua Weiss of Crosstalk 
took a group of 10 believers to both India and Sri Lanka and engaged the people in ways that have never been done. The Business for Missions team put their education to practice as they did quality research to develop successful micro-businesses. This team is infusing hope into a people in need. The process of developing these businesses is a three-year plan that will not only present ideas, but will help implement them and then make sure that they succeed. The team also brought the quality teaching materials of the Today with God project and left tools for the local churches to be empowered to spread the word of God to the people of India and Sri Lanka. Through the Today with God project, the Business for Missions team gave the opportunity to see, hear, and understand the visual presentation of the gospel message. Together, the Southwestern School of Business and Crosstalk International have provided the tools to be fishers of men, but have also shown how to be fishers of fish. With God's help, they are bettering people's lives in both physical and spiritual ways. And this is only the beginning. Crosstalk International and the Today with God Project have been at work here in Cuba now for nearly 10 years. In that time, we've seen over 30,000 people be presented with the message of Christ through Who is Jesus Project. And over 5,000 people have given their lives to the Lord for the very first time. Nearly 50 different churches have been planted specifically because of what God is doing through this project. With that influx, we need to support the pastors and their families. We need to help bring in more leadership. And that's where you come in. We have taken on the support of 61 pastors across the island of Cuba, and we'd like to ask your help. For just $50 a month, we can continue to support these pastors. For every gift that is committed, we've got a matching grant, a donor who's committed to double what you give. So your $50 becomes 100, and we can then support two pastors. Give us a call at 1-800-688-3422, or visit us online crosstalk.org. Jesus is Lord, my Lord, and I love Him. Jesus is Lord, my Lord, and I love Him so. Jesus is Lord, my Lord, and I love Him, I love Him. Jesus is Lord, my Lord, and I love Him so. I have a King. I serve a holy King. He's a good master. He's a good Lord. He has a good plan for me and for you. Jesus is King, my King, and I love Him. Jesus is King, my King, and I love Him so. Jesus is King, my King, and I love Him. I love Him. Jesus is King my king and I love him so you know people are in turmoil all around the United States people are scurrying rushing after something I don't know what for and I see it the same way in this country as well everybody's chasing something and they have no peace yet if we know the Lord of peace. We have true shalom. Here in Yerushalayim, the holy city of peace where Jesus is Lord and will return someday soon, I can declare that Jesus is peace. Jesus is peace, my peace, and I love him. Jesus is peace, my peace, and I love him so. Jesus is peace, my peace, 
And I love him, I love him. Jesus is peace, my peace, and I love him so. I have hope, and I have peace, and I have fullness in my life. I know the Ruach HaKodesh. I know the Holy Spirit. He lives and reigns in the lives of believers. And as a result, we have life. Jesus is life, my life, and I love him. Jesus is life, my life, and I love him so. Jesus is life, my life, and I love him, I love him. Jesus is life, my life, and I love him so. Jesus is Lord, my Lord, and I love him so. Jesus is Lord, my Lord, and I love him so. Jesus is Lord, my Lord, and I love him so. It's good to know the Lord. It's good to know the Lord. Well, I hope you are now engaged with Israel, the Jewish people, and our Jewish Messiah. In just a moment, we'll turn to the inspirational film, The Cyrus Call. What if I told you that for the cost of a couple of cups of coffee, you can present the gospel message to hundreds of people across the island of Cuba? That type of impact is hard to find anywhere in the world. But that's exactly what's possible with the Today With God project. You see, every flash drive that we bring down gets given to a pastor who will then use it across the island in door-to-door -door evangelism, in roadside evangelism, in church ministry, in Sunday school, in seminary. One flash drive. It's incredible what God can do. By skipping a cup of coffee just a couple of times a month, you can provide one flash drive that will get used across the island with hundreds of Cubans where the gospel message is presented. All it takes is $10. Give us a call at 1-800-688-3422 or visit us online at crosstalk.org. By the middle of the 19th century, Britain's bridgehead and the historic land of Israel had been firmly established with the foundation of CMJ, the bishopric, and the consulate at Christ Church in Jerusalem. Prussia had also established a consular presence with the arrival of the bishopric. In accordance with the agreement between the British and the King of Prussia, it was now his turn to nominate a successor to Bishop Alexander. And so the Swiss-born, German-speaking Anglican minister Samuel Gobat was appointed bishop. At the same time, Britain appointed a new consul, James Finn. He and his wife Elizabeth took up residence in the building adjoining the church. This is the main reception room in what was the British Consul's residence in Jerusalem. Today it is the drawing room of the rectory at Christchurch and known as the Finn Room. It was here that Consul James Finn and his wife Elizabeth conducted much of their business. Shortly after their arrival, British Jewish leader Sir Moses Montefiore visited Jerusalem, accompanied by Colonel George Gawler. Gawler was a Christian, a former Waterloo hero, and governor of South Australia, as well as a staunch advocate of Israel's future restoration. He and Finn shared common goals. Colonel Gawler, who encouraged Montefiore to establish an agricultural settlement for Jewish people, wrote a book entitled observations and practical suggestions for furtherance of the establishment of Jewish colonies in Palestine, while Consul and Mrs. Finn established the Society for the Promotion of Jewish Agricultural Labour in the Holy Land. The 
Crimean War of 1854 brought abject poverty and suffering among Jews in Jerusalem, many of whom had been supported by Jewish communities in Russia. In desperation, they turned to the CMJ mission and to Consul and Mrs. Finn. What Consul Finn, Elizabeth Finn, and James Finn tried to do is really to try to get people to work, to support themselves by earning uh, by their work. And uh, at least part of the small part of the Jewish community could really rely on that. The Finns purchased land near Jerusalem and established a farm on which to employ these destitute Jewish people. This farm became known as Kerem Avraham, or Abraham's Vineyard. Few people could relate to the ideas of James and Elizabeth Finn, Colonel Gawler and others for setting up Jewish industrial and agricultural settlements through the land of Israel. The land was very desolate and uninhabited, as photographs of that period and even decades later prove. And the Jewish people themselves were nowhere near the point of working the land. For Jews arriving in Palestine, purchasing land had hitherto been forbidden. Britain's support for Turkey against the Russians in the Crimean War meant that Britain once again had a certain amount of leverage with the Turkish government. Lord Shaftesbury, along with other evangelicals, saw this as another opportunity to help the Jewish people in their historic homeland. He sent a letter to the Foreign Secretary, Lord Clarendon, stating that the Sultan should be moved to issue a firman granting to the Jewish people power to hold land in Syria or any part of the Turkish dominions. Clarendon duly sent this request to his ambassador in Constantinople. The following year, Sir Moses Montefiore, against all expectations, received permission to buy land. He subsequently purchased land in Jerusalem outside the walls of the old city, where a small settlement named Mishkenotcha'anim was later established. The mid-19th century saw an interesting dynamic develop between the Protestant Christians in Jerusalem on the one hand and Jewish philanthropists on the other. Sometimes when you read the material uh, at the archives, you'll be able to notice that uh, it was really uh, a kind of uh, needing to help. And uh, in other ways, you read that it was really truly missionary uh, purposes uh, that was uh, behind uh, the idea of coming to support and help. But what was important is that uh, we can see the facts that they created over here, new establishments that did not exist here before in, the, in this area, such as uh, creating uh, health care, I mean in a systematic way, like an infirmary or later on a hospital, or workshops and schools in modern lines, like a more, what we can say, like a modern direction, or secular direction. And uh, I think so that the, uh, that impact was very important. Everything that has to do with what we call modernization in the fields of health, education, welfare, started here in this country with missionary activity to the Jews and later also to the Muslims or to the other local Christian communities. And everything that was done later was done by these communities was done as a reaction to the missionary activity. Another very significant British initiative was the formation of the Palestine Exploration Fund in 1865. There was a religious dimension to the founding of the Palestine Exploration Fund. It wasn't just one of science. Um, they, they, there was a feeling that it was needed uh, to have an illustration of the Bible in a more detailed and historical sort of way. In the early 1870s, it was decided by the Palestine Exploration Fund to undertake a, a major mapping operation within the land of uh, Palestine, as it was known then, uh, the Holy Land. They decided to bring on board um, various 
um, uh, officers from the Royal Engineers, uh, namely uh, Claude Condor, but also slightly later um, uh, Herbert uh, Kitchener, later who became known as uh, Lord Kitchener of Khartoum. And uh, they started mapping the country because hitherto uh, no uh, proper detailed maps existed for this part of the world. As a result of this mapping operation, they also created um, a set of volumes uh, detailing all of the, the, the interesting sites that they encountered, uh, archaeological sites and, and uh, questions of that sort. The field headquarters was at Christchurch and most of the PEF's Jerusalem office bearers were CMJ staff. You had British explorers maintaining an excellent relationship with the British uh, consul in Jerusalem on the one hand, but also with other organizations such as the um, London Jew Society, as it was known at the time, or the CMJ uh, today, where um, there was a connection which was set up already right from uh, the, the beginning uh, with the explorations of Charles Warren. So um, uh, among the other people who sort of stayed there was of course the, the famous uh, uh, American author Mark Twain. So you have Mark Twain also being connected uh, with uh, the British explorers and with CMJ uh, in the 1860s of the 19th century. So, as we have seen, the modern development of Israel was spearheaded by Christians such as those involved with the CMJ, who invested themselves in helping the Jewish people in the most meaningful ways. And the historic institution of Christ Church in Jerusalem is evidence of this powerful call of God to love my people and help them in their restoration to the land of Israel. Well, we're out of time in this episode, but when we return at our next visit, I pray your heart will be open to the Cyrus call. Till then, shalom and God bless, and pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Because he loves me, because he loves me, because he loves me, I will follow. Because he loves me, I will. What if I told you that for the cost of a couple of cups of coffee, you can present the gospel message to hundreds of people across the island of Cuba? That type of impact is hard to find anywhere in the world. But that's exactly what's possible with the Today with God project. You see, every flash drive that we bring down gets given to a pastor who will then use it across the island in door-to-door -door evangelism, in roadside evangelism, in church ministry, in Sunday school, in seminary. One flash drive. It's incredible what God can do. By skipping a cup of coffee just a couple of times a month, you can provide one flash drive that will get used across the island with hundreds of Cubans where the gospel message is presented. All it takes is $10. Give us a call at 1-800-688-3422 or visit us online at crosstalk.org.